Oh, ain't it cute? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Visions with two Z's. And I went and did it, y'all. I went and picked up the brand new DJI Mini 2. Don't call it the Mavic Mini. DJI's dropped the Mavic name and it's now just the Mini 2. And um, this is not going to be an unboxing. I can't do unboxings because usually when I get a new toy, I want to play with it as soon as it hit my doorstep. So I do have the box. You want to see the box? Here's the box. It opens. And inside the box, I got some cables, some books, um, extra props, the joystick knobs, and extra joystick knobs, some screws. Unboxing. Bam. So enough about that. The Mini 2. So last year, um, DJI released the original DJI Mini. And it was nice. It was a good device. But I was kind of hesitant. I didn't really want to upgrade to the Mini 2. I still have my old Phantom 3 standard, which I've been playing around with. Um, don't play around with it as much as I used to. I'll get into that later. But I didn't really see the need to upgrade to the Mini, the original Mini. And the Air was a little bit more than I wanted to spend based on how much I use it. And the Mavic Pro was is another stratosphere. I mean, it's nice, but it's another stratosphere. So then DJI goes and releases the Mini 2. And I'm like, yo, that's it right there. I need to go ahead and give it a try. So I went on, picked up the Fly a little bit package versus the Fly more package. And here we are. So what's similar? These things, if you look at it, it looks almost identical to the original Mini. The only real differences that will key you off that is not the Mini 2, that is not the original Mini, is it has a little LED light on the front. Um, the camera says 4K on it, and it says Mini 2 right here. Outside of that, oh yeah, the props have an orange stripe instead of a white one. Outside of that, they look, body-wise, they look identical. But um, the changes are all within. So start with the brand new... Well, it's not really brand new. It's the same controller as the um, Air 2. Um, the new smart controller now adds OcuSync 2.0 to the Mini. The original Mini used Wi-Fi, and it was okay. No, it wasn't. It was okay, but OcuSync 2.0 is stratosphere ahead of the original Wi-Fi, the original Wi-Fi that the Mini has. If you can get up to you can get up to 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers if you're into that type of thing. A rock solid connection, and it also adds a 720p video feed back to your phone, which looks great. Um, but the camera, I mean, the controller itself feels beautiful in the hands. It's very, very, very comfortable. And the only difference is really in the mini, the mini two controller and the Air two controller is it adds a little pause button. On the um, on the company on the um, home button, and instead of tripod mode, you have a semi mode, which basically does the same thing. It just slows down all your movements, so you can get that more cinematic like look when you're actually flying it. But you can actually use this controller. I've seen other reviews where they've actually used the Mini Two controller on the Air too. So what else is new? Um, the camera is, I'm not going to say it's all new, but the camera is definitely one of the biggest changes in the Mini 2. So, like I mentioned before, it's now, and now has 4K. I don't think I mentioned that before. I think I said the Mini 1 didn't have 4K, and that's the reason I want to upgrade. It still has a 12 megapixel, 1 and 2 third inch CMOS sensor with a fixed f2.8 aperture, fixed focus, and an 83 degree field of view. Or if you're like a camera head like me this guy then you have it's a 35 millimeter equivalent of 24 millimeter but outside it outside of that it now has 4k yep that's it 4k at a maximum of 30 frames per second and a 100 megabit per second bit rate um, so the quality that comes out of it the 4k quality that comes out of the thing is really really nice it's really 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 nice still have 2.7k at a max of 30 30 um, frames per second and that's at 40 megabits per second bit rate 
and still has 1080p, but now it adds 60 frames per second. And I think that's at 20 um, megabits per second for a bit rate. Don't quote me on that. But it does add 60 frames per second. 60 frames per second. So if you want to do some slow mo in 1080p, go for it. Roll with it because it'll come out. Look, it'll come out looking dope. Um, so from what I can tell, the camera specs look really, really similar to the original Air, with the only exception. Um, it doesn't have um, 1080p at 120 frames per second, and it doesn't have the um, it does not have HDR, which I don't usually use HDR anyway, and it does not have um, the D Center Light profile that you would get out of the um, for video, which I do wish it did have, because I do general generally like to shoot in a flatter profile so I can get some of that. Um, dynamic range but the files that come out of it um, which we'll, we'll talk about later it looks great it, it looks great I mean the profile the color profile that that's burned into the menu two it doesn't really burn in a horrible image like you would think it's still a very very workable image and it still handles color grades really really well the dynamic range is still decent and the only thing it is a little sharp little sharp sharp but you can kind of blur it up a little bit just to take some of that sharpness out to give it a more of a cinematic like but i mean i like my stuff sharp too so it doesn't really bother me too much because the files come out of center gorgeous um for the stills like i said before still 12 megapixels but now you can shoot in raw which is dope i, I mean i love shooting raw um i shoot raw on all my cameras i try to shoot raw with everything that i have but um it does add raw and it produces like a 24 and a half megabyte DNG file. Um, the raw files are flatter in color and they have a lot more dynamic range. And the I tell you, it can hold up to editing. You can, it can really, the files themselves can hold up to some editing and they come out looking great for, I mean, you would never think this was a one and two third inch sensor and good light, this thing handles business. Um, let's see. Also, it adds, the camera, it adds a digital zoom. Now, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of digital zoom, but I could see it being a nice little feature to use if you don't want to get the actual drone into the action, but you want to just get a quick little zoom. You probably, and I'm pretty sure you could do, someone that actually knows how to fly the thing, not like this guy, probably could use it to get like some nice little, um, nice little effects or whatever. But it does have a 2X lossy zoom in 4K, a 3X lossy zoom and 2.7 and a 4x up to a 4x lossless zoom in 1080p which basically is just digital zoom just crops in anyway so it's just cropping into that 4k resolution to get you that um to get you that nice lossless 1080p still has quick shots it still has the drone e helix rocket and circle quick shots but it also adds a new boomerang quick shot which basically throws the the drone out and it shoots out there and comes back around kind of like a um kind of like a boomerang hence the reason why they call it boomerang Aha. so outside of that it does not have active track which like the air and the pro and the air 2 active track basically you can lock it onto an object and it'll actively track it it doesn't have that me personally i probably wouldn't use that as of yet because again i'm still trying to learn how to fly i mean I, yeah, I would, I have to save that story for another video, but there I have reasons why I'm still trying to get confidence. But what I will tell you, for a new flyer, this thing definitely gives you confidence. I, I I never had the confidence I've ever had before with any of my other drones, even the um even the Phantom. I mean, this thing is solid. So just like any other DJI product, it has GPS, but it has um, support for the new Galileo, I don't know how new they are, but it has support for the Galileo satellite, um, European satellites. So when this thing fires up, it almost immediately connects to, no, no, I've seen less than 12 to 13 satellites that connects to. And when it, when it hovers, I mean, it hovers like a boss. I mean, it just sits there and it's just, I mean, it, it barely moves so I mean it hovers like a ball so I mean I, I really think the GPS has a lot to do with that the added GPS um, coverage that it has I think that helps with the hovering outside of that also I think what helps um, the new motors the new motors are stronger 
and they now the Mini 2 actually supports up to scale 5 wins, scale 5 class winds, um, which are up to like 24 miles per hour. I know I had it in the air and it had wing, um, they had wind gusts up to around 11, no, uh, wind gusts of like 15 miles per hour, and it sat there and just ate that wind like Homer Simpson in a buffet. Please, don't take the steam tray, sir. I mean, it just sat there and just ate it. I had no issues. Um, I only got one wind warning when I was flying it back home to me into the wind in, in normal mode. And but it still just came right back. It gave, gave me the one warning, and it just just kept flying in, and just came in without a problem. So um, also it has new props. I think I mentioned before the one difference is they have an orange stripe instead of a white stripe. It does have new props, and these props are like super quiet. I mean, when it's flying, for from drone for a drone, you can barely hear. It. I mean, I was at one of my kids' um, practices in a parking lot, and there were other parents. And I've got it in the air, and they didn't even know I had it. I mean, it's just really, it's really that quiet. Also, it has a new battery. Um, so it's a smaller battery. I think it's 2,200 milliamps versus, I think, 2,500 milliamps. I'll, I'll put the real thing right here in the screen. But it actually increased the flight time a whole one minute. Bruh. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know... That one minute could be the difference in getting your drone back or having to drop it somewhere that's, you know, not quite where you are. Um, for me, my, like my first flight, I got about 22 to about 25 minutes. But, you know, as you use it and as the battery breaks in, it should increase probably a couple more minutes. So, I mean, if I can get like 20, 25 to 30 minutes, if I can get anywhere near 30 minutes, I'm cool. Cause, I mean, the Phantom... I was lucky to get 15, but mostly I got like between 10 and 12, maybe 13, 14 minutes. So, um, if I can get anything over 20 minutes, I mean, I'm happy with it. Also, one, another, though, I've never heard really a lot of people talk about it, but it's not really that big of a deal, but it has a feature called Quick Transfer. So, if you have your phone close to the drone, you can transfer selected files up to 20 megabytes per second. So, if you're out in the field, you want to grab a quick something, like you, because you can edit it in the new DJI Fly app. Edit something, transfer it over, upload it to the gram, upload it to you know Facebook or you know whatever your, your platform of choice, and you can do it right there, right in the field. And I mean, it's I mean it's actually pretty. I'm gonna try it one day. I haven't tried it yet, but you know again, I'm still trying to learn to fly. So a couple of things I wish it had. I wish it had um, more obstacle avoidance sensors um, as a noob flyer like myself i'm still i still have anxiety so i'm still kind of worried about running into a side of a house kind of like i did my phantom the day i got it so yeah i'm still kind of nervous um but i've heard mixed reviews where you know seasoned drone pilots don't really like the obstacle of what it's because it kind of prohibits them to getting into the action like they really want but um i know me personally i would love to have them it's just to give me that added assurance. It does have sensors on the bottom for landing, but outside of that, it has no other additional sensors. Outside of that, I, like I mentioned before, I wish it did have the um, D Center Light profile, similar to like the Air and the um, Mavic Pro, the Air 2 and the Mavic Pro 2. But again, the files that come out of this thing are still good and they're still workable. You can still do all that. You can still edit them pretty heavily and they, you can color grade them pretty good. It doesn't really hurt. The quality of it. I mean, I'm I'm thoroughly shocked at how good I mean, this thing looks like a little toy drone. I mean, look at it. It looks like one of those little cheap little toy drones. I mean, even unfold it. Look, this is it. This is it. I mean, it's I mean, it's smaller than the controller. Well, folded up is smaller than the controller. It's actually almost it's yeah, it's pretty much smaller than the controller. But the files that come out of this thing and the way it flies, it flies like it's big, like a big boy. It actually flies better. It flies better than my old Phantom, which I would expect it to. But it doesn't fly like a little toy drone. It flies like a big boy drone, and it feels solid. I mean, it feels like quality. I wouldn't expect anything less from DJI, but it's it's a lot better. I mean, it's a lot better than one would think it is. I mean. Just check out the files. I mean, you, you tell me what you think. Just check it out.
yeah, that's it, man. Um, this is this is my DJI Mini Two. I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start doing some content with it. Um, the main because one of the main reasons why I didn't really fly my Phantom that much is because it's just so big. It's it's a lot to deal with. I got to basically carry a big suitcase around. You finally get it unpacked and ready to go. It's like you then you only get like twelve minutes, and it's like it's it's kind of a hassle. But with this, I can throw this in my little in my in my pocket if I want to. But throw it in a little bag. You know, you're on the road. You see something, pull over, pop it out, throw it in the air, boom, 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 throw it back in, charge it in the car. I mean, so this is going to allow me to be able to shoot and play around and probably really get used to learning how to really fly. Um, I'm not. I'm not a stranger to RC, to RC stuff. I mean, I've always been a huge radio control car guy. But, you know, growing up, haven't done that in a while, but I might have to get into that again. But yeah, I've always been you know, a radio control car guy. I love radio control cars. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm familiar with radio control stuff, but I just got to get used to it and just get confidence back into actually flying. And I think this is going to do it for me. So, yeah, look forward to some more content. I'm going to be. Pumping out a little more content about it. Um, yeah, that's it. It's your boy, Mr. Visions with two Z's, and we out. I can't reach it. It's too far. I can't I can't throw the I can't throw the lens. Okay. Your boy, Mr. Visions with two Z's, and we out. I missed.